Okay, so hello and welcome to this very long-awaited video. Lots of people have been asking for a very long time for me to either continue with or start again with the Disco Bot series. So obviously I originally did it over a year ago with JavaScript and I only did a few videos and people definitely wanted more. So I started again in TypeScript that I had been using at the time and it was basically the same but with maybe a bit more complexity, a few new cool features, but it wasn't really that great if I'm being completely honest. And people have been asking, you know, continue with it, please, 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 please. And I finally decided I'm going to start it again. So this is probably going to be quite a popular series. Uh, we're going to be doing it in C Sharp with a library called uh, D Sharp Plus. And I'm going to be showing you this video how to set it up and just write your first command. And then we can go from there. Feel free to let me know if I'm explaining things too much, not explaining things enough, you know, the length of the videos. Just give like any feedback you want down below. Um, you know, video suggestions as well, like what I should cover. For the start and for the first few videos, it'll be very simple things like how to make commands, how to rest uh, restrict commands to certain roles and channels and stuff like that. Um, but then after we've done the basics, we can actually start creating some cool commands that, for example, use external APIs. So you can, you know, grab stats off a game website or you can, um, you know, do a YouTube music thing and that's what people want. And I'd love to do it for my first video, but I don't want to jump straight into that. I need to, you know, do the startup and everything. So if you guys are patient enough with me and you show enough support, we will get to doing a music bot again. So that'll be maybe the first big thing we do after the basics. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Let's get into the video. But of course, first I got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Remy Baldwin, Buddha Ray, and Art Farrell. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to my Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. As always, my tutorial projects will be on my GitHub. The link's down below. If you go to GitHub, repositories, and then you go find the Discord bot tutorial repository, here it is. You'll be able to download it or clone it. It's up to you, and you can get access to it. I'll update it every video, so every time a new video comes out, I'll push a commit with the new content. So after this video, we'll have this video's kind of setup code in case you want to ever compare against that. If you notice any bugs, you can obviously report the issues, so on. Just use GitHub, what it was made to do. Uh a quick note for people who haven't used .NET Core before, you're going to have to actually install it. I'm not sure if Visual Studio does it for you. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but I'd rather you guys be safe and do this first, in which case it would just skip the download later. I'm going to link this down below. You need to get .NET Core 3.0, which is the a runtime for our thing. Um, download the SDK, not the runtime, sorry, and this so the software development kit. Go down to your operating system and get whichever bit you want. This is up to you. I don't know what you guys are using. I'm on Windows 64-bit installer. Install it, and when you're done, uh, you can then continue with the video. But if you guys have already used .NET Core 3.0 before, then you won't need this. It's just the version I'm going to be using, and I want you guys to be, you know, on the same version as me so that we don't get any problems due to versioning. But yeah, just a quick note, you, might, you guys might need to know that. So the source code for the Discord library we're going to be using is this D Sharp Plus. I'll link it down below if you guys want to, if I remember to do so. And it basically explains that if you want to download it, you're going to have to use this thing called Slim Get, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, the main thing to note is that you're going to have to have Visual Studio installed. So if you don't have that, then go install that from the internet. I'm sure you guys are capable. And then once you've got Visual Studio installed, you also have to have the .NET um, install. One sec, let me go to Visual Studio Community, Modify. Um, rather than the preview version, I use that for other stuff. And you're going to need to have the .NET desktop development installed, so you can use console applications, which is what we're going to be using to run the bot with. And feel free to get whatever else you need, but that should be the only one you need. Um, I already, I mean, it worked fine for me when I first did it because I already had a lot of these installed, but it only makes sense to be this one, or maybe uh, the universal one too, but it should basically just be .NET desktop development. You only need that one. Feel free to get others uh, if you want to. But anyway, once you've installed that and you go back to Unity, you can then create a new project. And we want to create just the base template, so C sharp. And we really we don't want to test which one all project types. And here is .NET Core console app. That's the you know simple one that we want because um, we're going to be putting in the other stuff to this. So the console app .NET Core next, and we can call it for example the uh, Discord bot tutorial. And I'm going to go uh, place it in a folder I've made for this. So I've made a Dapper Projects Discord bot tutorial select, and I want to go and create this. Okay, so now that it's open, you'll see we have a project, Disco Bot Tutorial. I've just renamed uh, it to have no spaces, uh, and then I've, I've had to reopen Visual Studio to do that. Um, and then here, as you see, there's uh, no spaces uh, or underscores or anything. It's just one word, Disco Bot Tutorial, for the namespace. So here's our class program, which is the entry point of the program. And the static void main gets called when you run a console app. Uh, or just a C sharp program in general. And um, as you see, all it does is it write line hello world. And that's, you know, just the template code for a C sharp application. There you go, you run it, you get hello world. Now we want to run it and get a disco bot running, okay? So we need to replace this and use other classes and stuff and files and folders to keep it all neat and organized to um, start up the bot. Now to do that, 
you're going to need one, the actual, you know, library that we're using, D Sharp. We're going to need an account on the uh, Discord app developers, which is how we can actually log our bot in and have a bot in the first place, and then a server to do it in. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get your token first, but I'm not going to actually show you my token for obvious reasons. Uh, don't show it to anyone. Uh, this is one thing that even though I said it in the past, people still decide to just paste it in our server and then they lose their token. Uh, people steal it and, you know, they can run a bot on the other person's account. So what we want to do is want to get the token and keep it safe. That's why I'm going to use it off. Uh, I'm going to cut ahead, you know, when I get it and put it in the file and then not show you guys. And we're also going to then download the D Sharp Plus. Okay, so here on Discord app developers, I can give you this link down below. You go to it, if it asks you to log in, you log in, you get here, you need a Discord account. Then we want to create a new application and we're just going to call it uh, Discord bot tutorial or Discord tutorial bot. Okay, and I'm going to make it a personal one for now. Uh, we create it and we have its name. You can set the picture. I'm not going to do that. Description. It's up to you, right? And here you have a client ID. That's fine. That's nothing you need to keep secret. Obviously, client secret you do. We're not even going to use that. We want to go down to bot. Now, by default, it's not a bot. I don't know why, what, what else you can do with it, but we want to make it a bot. So we click add bot. Yes. And now that it's a bot, you have a token. If you click this, you get a token. All right, remember guys, don't show anyone your token. So I'm not going to click this right now. I'm going to put it on my other screen. I'm going to copy paste it when I'm not showing you. But just remember, this is the token you need. You don't have to do anything else on here. We don't, don't care about any of that. We just need the token, okay? So I'm going to go move that away. And now we need to actually get the D Sharp installed. So to get the packages, you're going to need to go to your project, which is this thing here, the little C Sharp next to it. Go down to uh, Manage NuGet Packages. So if you've used um, JavaScript, you have NPM, Node Package Manager. This is kind of the same thing of that. Uh, and if you see, we have all these D Sharp things. Now that's only because I have this package source D Sharp selected. The actual um, D Sharp packages we're going to be using are not on GitHub. Like technically they are, but to download them, we're going to use their actual website where they host them. So to do that, you'd normally just have uh, Nugget here or all by default, but click on the little cog. And if you want to, you can add a new one. So that's what I've gone and done. I've added a new one called D Sharp and it's at this URL here. Now, don't worry, guys, I'll put the URL below in the description so you guys can paste it in or you can just read it here. It's uh, HTTPS, uh, Nugget, M is 0767.com slash, yeah, I might as well put it below, right? I'm not going to sit here and read it. Um, and once you add that and press OK, you'll be able to see all these packages if you search. Well, you don't even have to search anything. Just make sure this drop down box is on D Sharp. And here are all the D Sharp things. So we want D Sharp Plus and Commands Next and interactivity. We might even get some more, but for now we just want these three, okay? So go ahead on this v4.0 nightly, whatever, whatever, just get these three packages. You just click them and install, all right? I'm gonna skip ahead while I do this. And then once you're done, you'll see they have these little download things saying the latest for, uh, stable versions installed. So if we close the Nugget window, we can actually go down here and start typing like D sharp stuff and we can access the namespace and all that stuff in here. So now we can actually start writing code for the Discord bot. Okay, so we're going to want to make a class to actually have our bot code in. So let's go to our project and we're going to make a new class called bot. Uh, just ignore the app settings thing for now, or the, the config, I'll explain that later. Um, there's barely anything in it anyway. So public class bot, this is the class we're going to write our code in for the bot and we're going to instantiate it when we start. So we want to say var bot equals a new bot. You could also say bot, bot equals new bot, but you don't have to specify the type really uh, if you explicitly say there because it knows what type it is. And as a reader, you can easily see it's a bot type. Uh, the only time you'd really use, you, you'd not use var is if it's not explicitly obvious what type you're actually using. Var is just faster to type. Um, some people will always use the type, but then you'll have bot bot equals new bot. Um, you know, client client equals new client. It's just kind of a mess. I use var if um, it's obvious what type it is because we say right there. Uh, and then we make the bot, but we don't do anything with it yet. So let's make some code. We want to run a function to start the bot. So we'll make that function. It's a public async. So public called from externally, uh, called externally. Async means that it can be awaited. So it can be done at the same time as other code running on your computer. So we don't have to like wait for this to finish before doing other function calls. So uh, we're gonna make an async task. Async uh, task is the type you have to use for something that's async. So just uh, import system threading tasks. And then we'll call it a run bot or run async, right? So it's bot dot run async. And then inside here, we're going to uh, want to actually write the code to run our bot. So we're going to want a client. Client is the actual Discord bot. Remember, this is just our wrapper around it. The actual Discord bot in the D Sharp library is called a Discord client, just like how it's client in Discord JS. So we're going to want a public uh, Discord client. Client. And we're going to uh, make it a getter private setter. So this means that we can get access to this client by doing bot.client externally, we can get it, but we can only set it privately in here. 
Because we don't want some of a bit of code accidentally setting the client. It's only ever set in here, so we make it private. Um, now, run async should actually make that. So we're going to say client is equal to a new Discord client. But that takes in a config. So to actually make this new Discord client, we need to make a config of type Discord configuration. So we'll make a var config is a new Discord configuration. Okay, and then we'll fill it in here, put a semicolon at the end, and we'll pass it in to the Discord client. We haven't set any of the config settings yet, but that's what we're going to do in a minute. So let's come back to the config in, in a minute. Um, the next thing to do is actually to listen in for the events. So we want to say uh, client dot, and then we've got some events, the little lightning bolts. So we've got ready. So ready is when the bot turns on, right? So what do you do when the bot turns on? Well, then we want to make a function for when it turns on, right? So we can make down at the bottom, we'll make a function called, let's uh, put it here. So we want to make a private task. Task is a function that doesn't return anything technically. Oh no, technically it does return a task, but it's what you use as instead of a void when it's asynchronous because task is like, I don't actually want any data back. Task is just something that's an asynchronous operation as it explains there. Um, we're just going to call it like um, on client ready, right? It's up to you. And that takes in a ready event args E. So then whatever data happens when E happens, we can access the client or handled whatever. Uh, that's what we do in here. So for now, we'll just leave it blank and we want to add on client ready. Okay. So now when we, um, when the client is ready, we call this function. So you can put your own custom code here. Okay. Now the problem is not all code pass return a value. So for now we just return null and it's happy. Okay. We also want to say, uh, client dot. And then the other important one really is when we, um, get a message, but we're going to use the internal command handler that they, uh, that they give us for the start. So we don't actually need to do that. It technically we're kind of done with, uh, events. I mean, maybe you want to do uh, other things like raise events when commands uh, happen, raise events when errors happen. But to be honest, um, we don't really need to do any of us now. We don't even need to do the ready one, but I just thought that's to, uh, a good way to show you. Put some code here, like send a message to a channel saying the bot's on or whatever. It's, it's up to you. Uh, maybe log to the console saying the bot's on. Um, but apart from that, that's fine. Now, after we have subscribed to the events, uh, we want to then... Um, actually set up the commands. So we want to go down here and we want to say uh, commands config, okay, equals a new commands next configuration. And it asks for some things. So we're going to want like, for example, the string prefix and so on. Like there's, there's different things we need to set in here. Um, you know, whether the commands can be used in DMs and so on, but yeah, again, we'll just leave the com uh, config blank until the end. And then we want to set commands in the bot. So to have commands in the bot, we're going to want to say down here, public commands extension so the commands next extension and we'll just call it uh, commands get private set okay same thing we want to be able to get them but not set them uh, and then down here what we can do is we can say commands equals uh, client dot use commands next but then it needs to have the config which is this so the commands config okay and then whenever a command happens, it'll basically handle it for us. It's quite simple to start off with. And we just want to basically connect the bot now. So we can say await uh, client.connect async. So we've given it all the settings. We just say connect now. Um, okay. And apparently one thing they do in their bot is they have this thing at the end, uh, await task.delay1. So basically what might happen is before, uh, there's a problem here where the bot can actually quit early by accident. So this just basically adds a second delay after this to make sure it actually does what it's doing before it uh, quits by accident. It's just a fix that they have basically. It seems like quite a, a weird fix, but it but it works apparently. Um, and yeah, so now we just need to basically fill in the configs because all of the rest of it's set up and then the bot will turn on when we actually run it. Um, so the configs for the normal config, we want to have this app settings, right? So you see over here, I've made this config JSON. And this is where you put your token and your prefix. So I've already gone ahead and put the prefix in as a question mark. Token, you should copy and paste your token into here. So it just might be whatever it is, right? I'm gonna do it uh, off screen when we go ahead and run the bot. So just put yours in here as token and prefix. That's what it looks like. I'll zoom in, you guys can read this. Uh, you know, Don't come whining to me in the Discord server. It's not working because you didn't write it correctly. Like it's uh, speech marks with the token, speech marks with your thing in, speech marks, prefix, speech marks with your uh, prefix in, okay? Uh, and then we go back here and now we need to actually load in the config. 
So to load in the config, we're going to use the way they do it, which is just loading up a file and reading it. So we're going to want some uh, actual JSON, which is going to be JavaScript object notation. Uh, if you've never actually used JSON, then I'd recommend go looking that up. It's very, very common in computer science. It's a way used to just easily load up data and write to a file. It's, it's easier to work with than a normal text file, just having a JSON file. So what we can do is we can say uh, var JSON equals uh, string.empty is a technically more efficient way than using an empty string because it doesn't have to create a new one. Um, then we say, wait, I don't know why I'm on a new line. Uh, using var fs equals file. So this is like the uh, file stream, uh, file dot open read. So this uh, open read. And we have to say the file to open, which is config dot JSON, like so. And then, uh, whoops, I don't even have to do that. Then we're gonna say using SR, which is um, the stream reader. So var SR equals new stream reader. The, this code here, I'm not gonna go into explain this. It's nothing disk or bot related. It's just a way to open files and stuff. So I'm gonna read this file uh, using UTF-8 encoding. And I'm not even 100% sure what this uh, false is, but this is what they do for the uh, encoding. Should emit UTF identifier. I, I don't actually know what that ends up doing, but um, I'd recommend not just changing that. Uh, but in here, we want to basically load that JSON. So we can say JSON equals await SR, which is a stream reader, dot read to end async. Essentially, it reads the entire file, okay? And um, we're gonna add a configure await false. I'll make an entire different video explaining awaits and configures, uh, configure await false. Just, you can copy that bit for now, but I'll explain it some other time. It's not necessary to do. It's just added performance, essentially. Uh, if you configure await false, it means that the thread doing this task doesn't have to be the same one to continue it because something does the job and then comes back later to finish it when it's been awaited. So if you put this as true or you ignore it, it means the same thread has to come back and continue that one. But it's faster if you can have any thread come back. Now there are scenarios you have to use true, but we're using false. Uh, don't wanna waste too much time explaining that. But now we've actually loaded the JSON file. So for example, over here, we can set the token in the config equal to the, oh, wait, sorry, no. Now we've loaded the JSON, it's a string, but we need to actually go from that string into uh, an object that it can understand. So we're gonna have to make a um, file class, which is essentially the template of how the config should be. So if we quickly make a new class, it'll be very small. It's gonna be uh, config JSON. It's actually gonna be a struct, which is basically um, a value type rather than a reference type. So uh, we're not even gonna be storing this anywhere really. It's just gonna have um, a public string token, get private set, and a public string command prefix, or we'll just go with prefix, get private set, okay? And then they, they have a tag here, which is basically telling it which, um, in, in this uh, config file, which word essentially relates to this thing. So we say JSON property token, and then JSON property prefix, okay? So we're saying, get the prefix from the file, set it to this, get the token, set it to this, okay? That's all this file is, is just a config thing. And then we want to make a an instance of it from that text we grabbed from the file. So what we can actually do is we can then say var config json is equal to json convert dot deserialize object and you tell it what type so it's this new config json we just wrote a second ago and we pass in as a value the json which is the string here so this string being passed in here to be converted whoops sorry converted into this class or this struct here config json so now we can say config json dot token so we set the token to our token. You could just type it in here and not have an app settings, but it's at least for me, it's safer to have it separate and you guys should do it too probably uh, to put app settings to change. So there's the token, comma. Uh, token type is token type dot bot. Auto reconnect is true. So if the bot goes off, we reconnect automatically or try to. Log level is debug, meaning we get all logs basically rather than just errors or just good things or whatever and then finally use internal log handler true if you set that to false it then basically turns it off and you can use your own log handler but we'll just use theirs for now it's fine then we go down to the other config the commands config and what we want to do in here is we want to set the uh, string prefixes equal to 
and it has to be a, a string array or a string enumerable. So we'll just say a new string array and we'll set the uh, of size. Well, no, we'll just do this. Um, and we'll set the value to be our config JSON dot prefix. The reason it's an array is because you can use more if you want to, but they like, can have multiple valid prefixes, but they just have this one. Um, then we want to say, there's so many things you can set on here, but we'll set uh, enable mention prefix to uh, true, which just means instead of prefix, you can also just mention the bot at bot command rather than question mark command or whatever. Um, you might also want to uh, enable DMs, but I'm going to set that to false so that we don't have problems with the channel not existing. I'm just going to keep it so you can only use commands in the server. Now there are other settings we're not going to worry about. Uh, and that's it, to be honest. If we actually uh, go ahead and run the bot now, I want you guys to press run. I'm going to go ahead and put my token in the config and stick a, skip ahead, so I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, so I just told you to run the bot, but I didn't realize, wait, we haven't added it to a server yet. So to do that, you need to go to the web browser where you had your um, portal and this developer portal and your portal. We want to grab this URL I'll give you the uh, link to this website and you can go grab this URL. You paste it in, but this isn't for your bot. This is for like some random bot example they gave. Uh, you need to go to your bot and grab its ID and paste it over the ID here. Press enter. When you go to this URL, it knows you're logged in. Okay, um, select a server to add the bot to. So I've made a test server, click it, authorize, and then your bot will be added to your test server. Here it is, it's in my test server. And what we need to do is we need to actually be able to run it. But now it's in the server, that's good. Um, to run it, there's one little thing we need to change so we don't get a bug when we run the bot, um, which I learned the hard way, I forgot about this. So we can't return null here, even though it allows us to do it when you compile, it doesn't allow you to do it at runtime. You need to return a task.completed task until we actually put any code in here. It needs something to be returned, that's a task, so we do that. And then here, this isn't meant to be one, or, uh, it's meant to be minus one, because if we do one, what happens is we get to here, we wait one second and then it's done so the bot just turns off the, the thing ends we, minus one like makes it wait forever essentially like um we want our bot to stay online when it gets the end of the function we don't want it to just turn off because what would normally happen is it would get here wait one second go back to program.cs it's done it gets the end of the main and then it's it basically ends the program um we don't want that we want it to wait so we need to actually run the bot so we're going to say bot dot run async dot get a waiter dot get result what this does is get a waiter means asynchronously run the bot but let's say we put some code here to do something else like console log whatever right this would never get reached if we didn't do this part because what would happen is it would run the bot and it would just go forever right we would never reach this we might want to run the bot and keep it online and do some code afterwards so what we want to do is want to do this it says it ends the wait for the completion so what that means is the complete uh, it still happens the test keeps going but we don't wait for it to finish which is what we want because we might want to do something after at the moment we don't but it's just there ready and what this allows us to do is it allows us to run the bot and if you put your config in the right place this will work now this is a problem i had right notice how my config i've actually moved it i've copied and pasted it from here into this other file now you can't see this unless you click show all files because what happens is when we run this code it gets compiled um into you know a built thing here you see you got the exe and all this stuff um, these are normally hidden if you go into this folder so bin debug.net core app free and paste your config in there too then it'll work because it can't access it in here but it can access it in here There's, there'll be a really awkward way you could get it to access this but it's much easier to do it this way um, and then that, what that lets us do is we now go to discord and as you see the bots online and there it is so we can do uh, i don't know if the help thing is in by default yeah it is question mark help help uh we've got the help command that's it right so Next video, we'll start with commands, but I hope you guys like this video. You can get your bot online, then we can move on from there. It's a bit of a complex video to get started because it's all a bit fiddly, especially if you've never done C Sharp. If you have, then it's not as bad. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll see you guys next time where we start making commands. Feel free to go onto the repository and start doing it yourself. Like, um, you know, it's up to you. But next time, I'll show you guys how to do it in case you get stuck. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.